everybody. This is Tuesday morning, uh, May 26th. I apologize. I was uh, running late. I came back to my machine at 5 to 9. I went to hit all my right buttons, and somehow all my links have been um, deleted or something gone away. And uh, then I tried to log on to Facebook really, really, really quick, and uh, I forgot my password. Normally, it's an automatic and I had to reset the password. They had to send me a code. I had to reestablish a password. Of course, uh, I had to make it complicated, so I can't remember it in the future. I wrote it down. I think I'm going to be okay. But anyway, I am here. I hope you had a good Memorial Day. I want to thank Sue Fuller for leading the time of prayer yesterday, and uh, I hope that you had uh, a, a memorable and worthwhile and restful uh, Memorial Day. Uh, in our case, we went down to Emlington, where Linda's family's from, and, and we cared for her parents' um, at gravestones and uh, just walked in the woods and uh, social distanced, and uh, we did get a soft ice cream cone. And uh, it's peculiar to wait for a soft ice cream cone with a mask on and social distancing, but that's part of where we are. But uh, anyway, I hope you had a good good time. A couple one-liners here before we really get started. Let me see if I can find one that might be. Uh, I find it ironic that the colors red, white, and blue stand for freedom until, of course, they're flashing at you in your rearview mirrors. <laughs> Learn from yesterday, live for today, and have hope for tomorrow. That's a good word. Well, that's enough of those right now. I'll get down to the devotions, and we'll, um, we'll see what happens. We are this week going to be looking at, uh, at miracles of Jesus, mostly on the water, or having to do, yeah, on, on the water, or in the water, on the water. And interestingly, these miracles were only done for the disciples this was not done for the crowds this was not done for any audience except for the disciples so all week we'll be looking at uh, miracles uh, on the water and uh, they'll involve the disciples and we'll see what we can learn about Jesus and what we can learn about um, ourselves in the process that we might commit ourselves more fully to 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 Jesus as his disciples mark 4 35 to 41. That day when evening came, he said to the disciples, let's go to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. As you know, at the widest point, it's 13 miles. Sometimes it's only one or two miles wide. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up. Furious squall. And the waves broke over the boat, and it was nearly swamped. Quite the storm. Very unusual in the Sea of Galilee to be that violent and that furious. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him up and said, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? Don't we often say that when uh, we're in the midst of a storm of our life and we say, Jesus, don't you know? Don't you care? He got up, he rebuked the wind and said, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Jesus calms the storm. What are the storms of life like for us? Chaotic, out of control, anxiety, struggles, worry, all sorts of concerns, fighting, praying, worrying that God's forgotten us, feeling sick, trying to stay the course. Let me show you a, a picture. Uh, it's a picture painted by Rembrandt, and you're not going to see it real well here, but I would encourage you to, to, to Google Rembrandt's Christ in the Storm. That's the... Um, that's the picture that you'll see. Uh, look at the faces of each of the disciples when you Google that. Matter of fact, this one right, um, right there, it's got Rembrandt's face on it, almost a self-portrait. He puts himself into this picture. But look at the different expressions. Some are fighting the storm. Some are praying. 
Some are panicked. Each of the disciples is responding in a different way, and Jesus sleeps. Interesting as we think about the storms of life. Small boat. Have you ever been in a small boat when a storm is threatening? I remember being in the kayak in the west end of, uh, of the bay. And the wind was kicking up. The waves were coming up over the, um, the, the front of the kayak. I didn't know if I was going to make it. I know it wasn't all that dramatic. But uh, I was a little bit worried. And it was nothing like a furious storm on the Sea of Galilee. As we look at this parable, I'd like to show you or point out to you where it's at in the context of Mark. If you look at the verses before the story about Jesus calming the storm, storm. We see parables about the kingdom, a parable of the lampstand, parable of the growing seed, and parable of the mustard seed, talking about faith. And then we have this story about Jesus calming the storm. And he says to the disciples, don't you have faith? And then look what happens following this story where, where Mark interjects it. We then have stories of healing, the demon-possessed man, the sick woman, and Jesus healing Jairus' daughter. Talking about the kingdom and faith, talking about the healing power of God, and right in the middle, Mark puts the story about Jesus calming the storm. Why do you think you would, um, he would put it there? What do you think his motives and his thinking was as, as Mark put um, his memories of this experience to writing? Uh, Peter was probably helping him. Peter was probably a part of it, so Peter was with him. Jesus does not encourage or enjoy the storms of life. I don't think he creates most of the storms. Sometimes he does to teach us a lesson, but generally I don't think he's in the storm-making business. He's in the storm-calming business. He's not the author of the storm, but he is the one that puts the storm in its place. He says to the storm, quiet, be still. When you hear that word, be still, do you have any connotations or memories or echoes of earlier scriptures or other scriptures? I encourage you to look at Psalm 4610. Be still and know that I am God. Psalm 46 is a wonderful psalm to help calm your nerves and your anxieties during tumultuous times, furious storms. It's right up there in my book with uh, the 23rd Psalm, Psalm 46. But Psalm 46, 10, be still and I know, uh, be still and know that I am God. And then in the next verse, the Lord Almighty is with us. My simple word to you today, my encouraging word today is when things are difficult, Jesus commands us to be still and to turn towards him, not to be panicked. I want you to know that we have a choice on how we respond to things. I've been learning a lot of lessons the past several weeks, and uh, in every one of them, I'm learning that I have a choice to either get panicked, to get temperamental, to get self-sorry, or I have a choice to look to God. I have a choice to claim God's power. I have a choice to not let myself go sideways. If you had two columns on a piece of paper, allowing ourselves to be overcome or allowing ourselves to be overcome by God. First column, allowing ourselves to be overcome by the storm. Second column, allowing ourselves to be overcome by God. If we're allowing ourselves to be overcome by the storms of life, that means we take our cues from the chaos of life. The triggers and the buttons are pressed by the chaos of life versus taking their cues from the non-anxious, peaceful heart of Jesus the Christ. If we take our cues from the storms of life, we see Jesus is not caring the way the disciples did in this text. That they did not think that Jesus cared. Don't you care for us, about us? But when we choose to be overcome by the grace of God, the love of God, the courage of God, we see Jesus as being in our same boat with us not apart from us, but with us. 
And rather than being overcome by the storms of life, we tell Jesus how big our storms are. Have you ever found yourself saying, God, but my storm is special. My storm is unique. My storm is going to swamp the boat. But when we are overcome with the love of God and the courage of God, we tell the storm how big God is. Now, storm, you just wait and watch. The storm is small compared to what God can do. Mark has put this story about Jesus calming the storm only for the disciples to be reminded of, and they share with us, the, the reader, the audience since. But he puts it into the context of talking about the kingdom of God, and then the context of showing that God is all-powerful. He can heal, but he can also calm the storm. Friends, the storms of your life, I want to assure you, can be calmed by the love of God. God is with us. Remember Psalms 46, be still and know that I am God. Tomorrow we will look at a, another uh, reference to, um, let me tell you what we're going to look at tomorrow, another reference to uh, a miracle on the water. We're going to look at Mark chapter 6, 45 to 52. On Thursday, we're going to look at Peter walking on the water. But tomorrow, we're going to look at uh, Mark 6, 45 to 52. Friends, let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, I pray that the storms of life don't swamp our boat, that we make a choice to remember that you're with us, and that we call upon you, that we turn it over to you, and Lord, that we claim your calming presence. May we not be panicked, may we not be emotional, may we not be temperamental, but may we be strong so that we have the capacity to love and to help those that are closest to us. And God, I pray that you will lift up this congregation with eagle's wings. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Friends, I hope you have a great day. Sorry I got going late today, but uh, I hope you have a good day. I look forward to seeing you right around 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, and we'll be reading from Mark chapter 6, 45 to 52. God bless you. Have a good day. Bye-bye.